<clears throat> Hello and welcome to EFAP mini catch up super chat uh gloss onion uh pillar of garbage drinker. There you go. They're all the keywords done. Yeah. Everyone knows exactly what it is now. Two two two, I think it was. I think uh, so. Yes. I forget the number. Because I think one. Gloss Onion was the first one after the New Year. Uh the New Year one. Yes. Uh well, it, yeah, yeah, it was like a combo up, an arc of Gloss Onion. Yes, because that seems to keep happening with the media that we cover, where we do, like, the extensive breakdown. It's like, ah, uh, and then there was a fucking video on it. <laughs> and then we need to... Not need to, to uh, yeah. Usually baffling, yeah. I guess um, this one was kind of interesting in that it was, uh, it's kind of like, uh, I guess it's kind of similar to the Synthetic Man one, and that it's sort of like, this is what happens when, like, you're just not really, like, viewing storytelling or, like, media through... Like, the lens that it's being filtered through is way more, like, meta and beyond storytelling. And it just leads to these really weird outcomes. Yeah, or you you focus on the meta, and that you just stop there. That's it. It's over. There's nothing more to mm -hmm. discuss. Like just well, just be, as everything... if just being aware of the meta. And uh, with Pillar of Garbage, I, I guess he made a whole She-Hulk video thing. And I wouldn't be surprised if... A lot of those videos were well because that was another around. one that was a, a battle, right? That was like a battleground where it, it felt like a lot of the time we weren't even talking about like the show. It was like this weird sort of uh, like because... field on which other people fought about like politics. It was really weird. These are yeah, well, it's oh, the things appealing to some meta aspect. Aren't I clever that I just recognize what it tells oh, me? Oh yeah, right. And then I stop yeah, thinking. It's almost like the See, what we like to do here. Yeah, a little bit. It's like the film is telling you what the perspective is that you're meant to hold, and then you just wholesale accept it rather than going, well, yeah, but like, did the film do the work necessary to warrant, you know, the acceptance of these things? In the case of Glass Onion, the answer is no. The film is very deficient. Well, it started then. Nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay. <laughs> what adapted from? <laughs> Uh, I think that it, uh, the way that it works with the Academy Awards is that if you're a sequel, you're automatically an adapted screenplay because you'll follow up to uh, a, another... I'm pretty sure that's how it works, yeah. Which is bizarre I because think. it doesn't have anything to do with a first. Uh, it doesn't. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that's how it works with the Oscars. If you are that's a sequel, a you are an adapted screenplay. There is it, a it character be like that's in based... both of them, so... <laughs> well, yeah, that would be the argument, right? It's based on Glass Onion to some extent. Okay. Um, because, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, Knives Out, right. It gets confusing because the series is called Knives Out. I know that Ryan Johnson doesn't like that, but that's what Netflix said. Yep. The franchise is called Knives Out, and Glass Onion is but a Knives Out mystery. <laughs> the next one was called the Glass Onion Mystery. I, you know what? I don't think that that would be very good in terms of, like, brand recognition. It would just make things even more confusing. Right then. The band yeah. Day Trader did a song called Fire Breather in 2012. It's a great theme for King for series. Give it a listen. All right. Fire Breather by yeah, my uh, Day Trader. Gotcha. Uh, hey, Fringy, do you think being able to swap items when carrying two at a time in MK8 would improve the game or make it slightly worse? Uh, I... World Combat 8. No, 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 Mario Kart 8. <laughs> oh, okay. He's talking about, cause it, and specifically Deluxe, because in Mario Kart 8, it, uh, you know how, like, in, in a lot of the older Mario Kart games, it could be that, like, if you get an item and, and it's, like, a green shell, you can just drag it behind and it empties up the slot for you? Yep. Yeah, like, in Mario Kart 8, they changed that to where that's not the way that it works. If you're holding onto that item, it still fills up a slot, and then Deluxe basically gives you two slots... Um, it still carries over the same thing where if you hold the item, it occupies one slot, but it also gives you a second slot. As for giving people the option to switch them out, <clears throat> I think... <clears throat> oh, damn, sorry. I think the reason why that probably would never get implemented is because the point of Mario Kart is to be as simple as possible so that everybody understands it and can play it. And I think that Nintendo would look at that and go, that's like a variable that's being added that just makes it more complicated. Not especially complicated, but more complicated than they'd want it to. Uh, but as for giving people the option to switch them out, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. I think it, I think it might be better to bind it to whichever one you pick up first. That's the one that you have to use first. That's like the nature of the game. 
And so sometimes you might be in a position where you're just going to get rid of something that you perceive as being not as valuable to use the next thing. And maybe that's just like part of the game. Um, I'm happy with the system as it is. I've never felt like, damn, if only I could switch them. Like, that's never been the case. Because usually I just get rid of it and then just get the next item anyway. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the system as it is now. Fair enough. Um, hi, Rags. Hello. Bring this. Where can I find your God of War 2018 stream? Uh, well, I, I uploaded the VODs to the Cosmoronic channel, and I need to upload the Ragnarok ones as well, but I need to... Because of issues that happened when I was streaming uh, the first part, I'll need to combine part one and two to, you know, together. So, yeah, I'll get around to it eventually. But, yes, 2018 playthrough is up. Talking about Bionicle, so where are the EFAP movies? One day. One day. Bionicle EFAP. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Uh, maybe one day, but in this case, maybe we'll probably mean no. Uh, what was better, Bionicle, Beyblade, or Raw Okra? Raw okra? Like the plant? I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. I don't recognize it. R-A-W-O-K-R-A? -A? Yes. Um, well, I remember Beyblades. Um, you had the little arena, and they had all the tops and stuff. I don't know anything about the show, though. Apparently there was a Beyblade show. Like all these doohickey collectible things, there was a show that was attached to it. I don't know anything about the show. I don't know how you make a show out of Beyblades. I guess there's like spirits that come out of the Beyblades or something. I don't oh. fucking know. It's a Japanese thing. Um, and the other one was Bionicle. It's obviously the best one. Obviously. I'm glad we solved that. Yep. Takes care of that. Um, hey, guys. I'm halfway through the Andor EFAP review. Great stuff. Can't believe Disney made a good show. Hell must be freezing over. Also, high rags. Hello. Which yeah, doesn't feel weird. like a Disney show at all. It feels like it was divorced from the process that has yielded all of the shit lately. Yeah, yeah it didn't go through the sausage maker. A Disney show. Yeah, exactly. Almost feels like it's not a Disney show. It's like a real show that managed to get snuck through. It's not like a Disney show. It's like a real show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in quotes, F the pain away, now my bed is in ruins. Actual lyrics from recent Sonic game. Nah, come Eft on. the pain away. Now my bed is no, in No, I don't believe you. That doesn't sound like Why that would, would someone be. lie on the internet? That doesn't sound like it would be from Sonic. I think is that um... like a Shadow? Is that like Shadow's theme? No, but Shadow doesn't swear. He says damn and crap. No, that, that's, no what that's what I'm saying. F the, that's what he says F. Yeah, F. I don't think say, he would he even say do fuck. that. I he think says that, F. I think... Nah, I think that would still be too edgy for Edgy the Hedgy. I think the most that they'll give him is damn. I don't even know if they'd give him goddamn. I think that's how, that's how, <laughs> like, tame it actually is, really. But you think F is more edgier than saying damn? No, I'm saying, I'm saying that, yeah, yeah, actually, you know what, yeah, I'd say that they'd be like, well, no, because people will, you know, people know, damn is like, well, nobody cares about damn. Whereas like F, it'll be like, uh oh, ooh. oh, oh, that means that means fuck. Word. that means the fuck word. That's right. People, exactly. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe it is edgier. Yeah. Um, I was subscribed to Lego Magazine at the time of Bionicle, and I still have all the insert comic books of Bionicle. It's a fun story. That's interesting. I wonder if those are like worth something. You know. Maybe. What's Bionicle doing these days? I have no uh, idea. I think that a lot of the Lego stuff now is much more about branded stuff, so like Star Wars and Marvel and things. More so than... Because I, I, I still... I'm pretty sure that Bionicle is still a thing that's going, but like I'm pretty sure it's nowhere near as popular as it used to be. They've just got a bunch of things, right? Like Ninjago and um, like Technic and stuff, where it's like the cars. Um, Lego City is like one of their sort because of Because Lego Technic things, was, right? is old. It is fairly old, yeah. Legosity. Yeah, well, Legosity. they made a game for Lego City Ninja that I always Go. hear is really good. Lego City Undercover. That was a Wii U game. Um, the best hacking and modding community is undoubtedly Sonic's. It helps because Sonic Team is made up of thumbless gibbons, so they need the assistance. I didn't know they're like Bethesda. Is is there like, a, well, I mean, Sonic Frontiers is pretty widely accepted to be like not a very polished game, right? For like whatever potential it has. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. So maybe it's like, yeah, the community comes in, fixes it up, adds new content and everything. Man. Imagine that's how you kept your IP alive. What, through fans modding your stuff? Mm hmm I guess to some extent, like, that's been the case for other franchises, right? Like, a lot of, like, the Unreal, like, Unreal Tournament stuff would have been, that was, like, modding, right? Quake. Um, well, I wonder how I the mean, Bethesda I stuff would... It feels like know. the difference when it's a game that works with stuff on top of it versus a game that doesn't getting fixed. Uh, well, I guess you'd look at, like, Elder Scrolls, right? Or, like, Bethesda games in general that people often acknowledge <clears throat> that those games were at least broken and the community comes along and fixes them. Like, from software games, and at least that's how it used to be, kind of. Dark Souls 1, yes, On 2. PC. <laughs> yeah, on PC. Yeah. Uh, Drinker was downright charitable because he forgot how tism it was and accidentally simplified the plot in his synopsis. Yeah, I felt that way when watching this video and it came out. I was like, you're being too nice, if anything. <laughs> Greetings, your longness, King Mauler of EFAP. I'm here to humbly request an unbridled critique of the Iron Giant. Also, hi, Fringy. Please don't ban me. Oh, hey. Well, um, Iron is, Giant's pretty is that cool. Something that would, is that something that you think would ever be on the, uh, on the cards, though? Not an impossibility. I need to re mm. rewatch it again. I've only ever liked I, it. Iron Giant is a pretty cool movie. And we've got a lot of stuff on the list, so who knows? Hmm. Um, says she nicks and ta. Guys dislike Chris Stuckman, but I was curious to see what you think about Jeremy Johns. I think he's good for quick reviews. I think Jeremy Johns is one of the better uh, of the like the five ten minute like format of reviews. Yeah, same. Um, I think that he, I I get the impression that he's pretty passionate about films. Like that really comes through clearly. Uh, I can't say I watch a whole lot of his stuff. I think I used to watch uh, a lot more of it, but yeah, like he struck me as one of the better people at the format of like five to ten minute, like quick reviews that give you a general sense of whether or not you'd enjoy a film or, you know, rather watch something else. Bionicle is the Dark Souls of Lego. Build a bear baggage claim. <laughs> Dark yeah. Souls right. of Lego. When are, we, when are we escaping the Dark Souls, you know, the Dark Souls of as a comparison? Dark Probably... Souls 3 is six years old, seven Maybe years never. old even. Maybe yeah, not, yeah. never. Lord of the Rings was elf propaganda, and Rings of Power shows the elves for what they really are. Greedy thieves and authoritarian, authoritarian D-bags. I had suspicions this whole time. Rings of Power is just being honest and great. Hey, Das, sub of those for a story. while. It was. Recent fan of EFAP, surprised to see you on the panel. How did you come to be a hate monger of the Toxic Brood? Also, hi, Rags. That's a Hello. real simple one. He was in chat saying hi, basically. <laughs> and, and, then, and of course, when it's like, holy shit, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I think. Oh, damn. Were all three of us familiar with his work before even. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I, I have fond memories of watching The Idiot Box with my friends. So I was just like, holy fuck, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. Oh, this is a nice one. Um, I would suck a fart out of ER. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Here you go. It's wholesome is what I would say. Um, thought I'd give my support finally. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you, you bet. Thank, thank you. Bone apple tea is what I've heard to describe the phenomenon where people screw up idioms. It's pretty common that people do mess up. Bone apple tea. That's, yeah, it feels like an tea. apt way to describe it. Yeah, it's, uh, Everyone screws up, and I think it's just good yeah. to have fun when you finally figure out that you have screwed one up. Yeah, you don't want to be like Rick, where when he, you know, Morty finds out that he takes things for granted, he deletes yeah. his memory of that. <laughs> oh, you like that? You like that, huh? I bet that really blows your mind. <laughs> well, uh, I'm Rick sure there was Morty. one in the Simpsons as well. What was it? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, um, there was one in Simpsons, right? Like, there was a similar joke about, about idioms. Do you have anything else to do the memories? Or? The problem is that it'd just be like... Because that, that feels like a, a fairly common joke in a lot of comedies, right? Of, like, pointing out when people use the wrong idiom. What would be the, uh, what would be the term used to describe, when, like, when people say, I could care less? What would that be? Is it just wrong? Is that, like, like all just it wrong. is? <laughs> Yeah, like when they Kinda. get when they get an idiom or a saying wrong. I'm not sure. I'm there happy might to be. say they're just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Most underrated Buffy or Angel episode? Mine is Be a Bad. That's not underrated. Come on. Pretty bad. Underrated? Why would you say that? But also, hmm, what, it, what is <laughs> underrated? Um, uh, the body is obviously excluded from the mix. Um, well, it would be excluded. But, not uh, fade away. I think Hush is kind of overrated. It might be, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I should probably um, just say it absolutely is. It's the only one that got submitted for an Emmy for writing. Yes. Which yeah. feels uncomfortable uh, compared to other stuff. Uh, I feel like Epiphany is one of the strongest episodes of, like, that's that's one, uh, that's a really great episode. I'm not sure how often that would rank, like, super high up on people's lists. I absolutely adore 5x5, five five, but I assume that's pretty correctly rated. Most people think it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, hmm. Mm. I'm not sure which ones which ones are like really good that the it seems like more often I find out about episodes or seasons that are overrated. Like apparently that people think that season two is really good. Well, not only that, but the the you'll find a lot of hatred for like everything in season seven. It's like, what do you mean? Those are good stuff. Uh, in there. well yeah, because a lot of people hate the uh the, the big blowout scene, which uh is like, damn, feel like you missed like the whole show. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? That's it. That's my like, take. That's the most underrated episode when that happens. Be nice and right, vague. because it seems to be a very common opinion that like everybody was yeah, wrong about. And I think irrational. everyone is wrong about it. <laughs> yeah, more or less, because that's just I just feel like that's the incorrect read of that entire thing. It's like I feel like you'd have to it, it feels like one of those failings of well, Buffy is the protagonist, so obviously she's right. It's like, but these characters, like, she's not the protagonist. She's a person of many who live in this world. I think people are used to that point, and a lot of people agree with her. Like, hey, yeah, what's right. What's happening right now? Boo. Out mm -hmm. of character. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Even though they did the work over the whole <clears throat> season to enable that scene oh, yeah. to take place. Some great scenes build up to that scene. Yes. You ever notice how the best comedians have self-depriving jokes and smart people have introspection, but on an unrelated note, Ryan thinks TLJ has no flaws. Um, um I suppose I get what you mean in the sense that... Yeah, I suppose I get what you mean. He's, he's just gonna I, keep I, on I, trucking on, that's his thing. He's just like, oh, it was good, bye. Yes. And in a sense, that makes him pretty unstoppable in terms of he'll just keep making stuff. He's made yeah. a new show that just came out that's been very well received again. So, as far as he's concerned, yeah. he's doing pretty well. Expect another fucking five knives out, probably. Probably, yeah. There'll be more. Um, hi, Rags. Hello. Knock, knock. Who is there? Whiskey. Whiskey who? Who's a good boy? I am. What it says. <laughs> oh, well, all right then. Pingans on Puss in Boots 2. Great movie, IMO. Good cat. Yeah, it's a great we, movie. <laughs> we direct this person to the idea that we'll probably talk about it at the beginning of EFAP 223. So, yes. Give that a listen if you want to know what we thought of Puss in Boots. Or alternatively, check out Metal's Forge. Uh, oh, yeah. I was on that with Meme, and we talked about Puss in Boots at great length. Um, remember at the end, to give a short synopsis of everything you talked about so Pillar can maybe say something other than I will rebut slash farm them, but I can't follow six hours of attacks. <sighs> well, it didn't matter in the end, right? Did it? Or... Well, I, I mean, a part, apparently a part of his post is that EFAP is designed in a way that no one could ever respond to us. Like, oh. Uh, it's not designed that way. It's <laughs> just what we like to do and what we enjoy. We take it point by point, just go out and just tackle one, that's all. Mm -hmm. Do that. Well, yeah, right, because if you... Yeah, ex exactly. Uh, late, but my new baby boy, Jack, was born on the 10th of the 20... Wait, oh, sorry, it's backwards. 27th of October 22, so definitely Team Halloween. Almost three months old, and I'm behind on EFAP. Catching up now, husband has been playing Ragnarok and loving it. Jack loves the EFAP plushies. Aww. Well, oh. congrats, by I'm the way. Glad. Yeah. Good job. Awesome news. And that, that's um. very neat as well. <laughs> the plushie <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> that's really cool, actually. Yeah. My, uh, my sister's dog, I've been tempted to be like, let him play with it. And then I'm like, oh, wait, what if he 
rips it apart. I don't know. <laughs> like, we should always be All careful. Right. I don't know. Uh, this just says buy a nickel. All right. We don't have nickels in Australia. We don't. Yeah. Oh wait, we, we have nickels. Wait, yeah, we do. yeah we do. Nickel is a ten cent piece, right? Uh, for us, it's five. Oh, well then, yeah, ten. we have five cent pieces, but we don't we don't call them nickels. It's just a five cent piece. Well, regardless, we there is pennies. probably an American nickel in Australia somewhere that you can find. Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, they Born just get mixed up here and there. Call it National Treasure or something. National Treasure uh, down under. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, pillar of Garbage. I have a moral obligation proceeds to lie. Theme of Glass Onion. You have a moral obligation to lie. I'm detecting a pattern. Well, he lied absolutely like no weird... less than what he accused mm. of uh, Drinker. Also, it's just kind of weird to be like, it's a moral... It's, you just want to shit and drink her. Like, that's... That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's all it was. Yeah, this was an opportunity that was... It, just... This wasn't some, like, crusade that you felt, like, imp Im like impelled or, you know, to, compelled to, uh, to undertake. You just wanted to shit on him because you knew it would get you some views, probably. Yeah. Also, where was... be the drinker? I oh, the a busy man these days. Could grab him mm -hmm. up, but at the same time, don't even need him. Because his video stood, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't know why you always pick on Jennifer Lawrence. If she hadn't invented podcasting, none of you would be here. True. There, she was the first podcaster. Good for her. Uh, this came out over a decade ago? You mean like the tweets that people lost their jobs over? Wait, what came about over a decade ago? I don't know what they're referring to. <clears throat> A little lost on Looper, maybe? Looper? Maybe, yeah. It's about a decade maybe. old. Don't you see? If the movie calls itself dumb, it can no longer be dumb. Dumb movies don't know that they're dumb. Unrelated, high rags. Hello. You know, I never thought of that. The movie's kind of smart, actually. Wow, That's that is That's pretty clever, true. yeah. Been waiting for y'all to EFAP this guy for a while. You should see his defense of She-Hulk episode one in regards to general criticism. It's actual garbage. Oof. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you. Uh, that show I'll without. pass on that. I, I don't. Want, I don't need to say that. Oh yeah, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll believe you. Uh, Devil fruit of the week is the brain brain fruit, which allows the user's brain to expand indefinitely with new knowledge. Would you eat this fruit? Expand uh, indefinitely with new knowledge? Well, no, because so like you're a, always gaining new knowledge. So eventually, you get too big, right? If it just keeps expanding indefinitely. Well, what, what does it mean when it expands? Does my brain actually physically expand? Because if it does that, that could become incredibly inconvenient. I feel like if it just means I can learn a bunch of stuff. Then I don't know. That seems better. Like to an extent, we're constantly bringing in new information and everything. But this sounds a little bit more scary. Like expanding yeah. indefinitely. Well, it sounds like, the, you know, in the sense that the brain will gain information, but it also loses and discards information. The implication here almost seems to be that it all gets retained, and maybe that's... Maybe humans can't function if that's the way that our brains work, that every single thing that we ever, like, get feedback on is retained. Might make it impossible to exist yeah. in the world. If the question were, like, would you rather have stronger memory, faster thinking, and better thinking, probably, like... Yeah, sure, I guess, but this if, one... If it like, means hmm. I don't have to swim, yeah, like, if I can't swim, it's like, that seems like an okay trade, actually. But it's if like it means first time. it's a gamble yeah. as to what exactly kind of life I'm living, I'm not going to take the gamble. Nah, no, don't do not do that. That's what Jafar did, and look at what it cost him. Exactly. Well, no, he didn't make a gamble, he just explicitly asked for the thing that fucked him over. <laughs> That was the remake that did the thing where it's like, ah, see, he, he done goofed. His wish was sufficiently vague that Will Smith could, put, like, turn him into a genie. Why would you change it? It was perfect. Why would you change it? Uh, I don't know why they make these changes. I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of the thing, right? You, you're like, how could you screw it up? I think I, I recently said on a stream that, like, of the list of upcoming Disney films this year, the one that I think would stand the best chance of being, like, the best one would be the Little Mermaid remake. Because it's like, well, you're just, like, adapting something that already exists and is really good. But then it's like, oh, yeah, but The Lion King, though. <laughs> like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just these weird changes that get made where it's like, you don't fully... I it mean, it's the pitfall of, of adaptation, potentially, right? Where, like, you don't fully appreciate why a lot of decisions were made. 
So, like, yeah, you pull some of the dialogue and you pull, like, a lot of the core beats, but then there's one or two things out of place and it throws everything off. It's hot, hot, hot. Mm. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> that's fair. Fair enough. Hi, all. My last video recently took off, and EFAP has been a good brain food over the years. Take this as a small thanks. Disney's best anti-villain, in brackets. Anti-villain. Uh, anti-villain or anti-hero? Anti-villain. Is an anti-villain just like an anti-hero, but more villainous? I'm not sh I don't think so. It's not a common thing. Let me, let me look it up. An anti-villain. Oh, uh, yeah, so they're described as a, a person with good traits uh, and virtues who is ultimately the villain compared to like an anti-hero with bad traits who's the hero. Okay. <clears throat> I would totally have a three-way with Karen Gillan and Margot Robbie, but it's a matter of scheduling. It has nothing to do with our different economic statuses, living in different states or countries. Robbie's marital status or our massive attract attractiveness gap. It's just scheduling. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I can understand you don't have anything else standing in the way, but scheduling can be that difficult. Important. Uh, coincidences are standard in this genre. Agatha Christie published mystery novelist, apparent, uh, probably. It's, um, it's incredibly reductive and frustrating. But the thing is, he would say the same back to you if you said the reverse. It just feels like communication's fucking dead on that subject. Uh, it's has... like, I would never I, I would never want to encourage people to take the route of... It, it, coincidences are fine, it's okay, they happen. It's like, you want to avoid those, you want to work to avoid those sorts of things. It always gets weird as well, because you're like, oh, we can just do the exact same thing, but not have a coincidence. What do you think? And do they just go like, well, it's pointless, because it doesn't matter either way. I don't know how they deal with that, typically. People who, like, advocate for coincidence. Uh, JCS isn't good because real life doesn't write such coincidences in its crimes, and as we know, coincidences are necessary. Oh, and play DDLC, Dumbos. Mm. Yeah. I presume that's, know. like, a meme, right? Yeah, probably. So. Yeah. Well, so I was thinking about this because I watched Apollo 13, and you could watch that film, and if you didn't know it was real, it's like, how did you pull this off? Like, how did you manage all of these things? It was like, well, that's what happened, so... <laughs> but, but then it would just be like, well, there was a cause, even if you don't understand it. It was a lot of smart people developed solutions to very difficult problems. Um, and in, in particularly difficult moments, people managed to come through when they may well have failed. And it's just like, well, was that a coincidence? It's like, not really. I mean, that's cause and effect in play, right? Even if, like, the the chain of events is unlikely. The reality is that, like, any story that you ever see is some chain of events that could have been one of many. It's kind of like the way that you view it, right, and what are the consequences uh, on the narrative. But I suppose, yeah, like, when it's based on something that really happened, that's where it gets kind of interesting to talk about, like, coincidences. Did you know that in 1977, Star Wars A New Hope was released and the last execution by guillotine happened? That is like true, that. yes. Eight. I hope they made it. Uh, question, would you rather watch a modern Star Wars movie or watch a guilty man die by guillotine? Guillotine. Well, I'd probably go for Star Wars. Yeah, I think I would too. I don't want to see that. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm weighing up in my head. How how often do you get the chance to watch someone die in a way that's like quote unquote approved? Uh, well, sure, hmm. but like I don't want to see that. I don't yeah, think. Right. Yeah. Like regard, like even even if it's like, oh yeah, well, it's definitely guilty. It's like I still don't like. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I guess I'll go with Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, we got a Pokemon. Oh my goodness! All right, which uh, which ones we have? Uh, in fact, actually, uh, just text it. Yeah, put it there. I'll look them up, and then we'll do the super chat once I've got the uh, once I've got the list. 
Very well. Mm. I thought we set a rule that you can only do one. Um, well... <laughs> two, we do... That's four, yeah. I don't know. If we're quick, we can do four real quick. We <laughs> could we could just see it, boom. Number out of ten, or yay, mm. nay, etc. Um... If you look up Father Knox, he gives some general rules about writing mysteries back in 1928. Here's one. Twin brothers and doubles generally must not appear unless we've been duly prepared for them. I would agree, generally, yeah. The springing that, oh, it was, it's like a clone. Oh, it was a clone the whole time. It was, oh, it was a twin the whole time. Oh, it's, it's just like, and they woke up, it was all a dream. Like, oh. I mean, unless there's a lot of clues along the way that are recontextualized, that's okay. If the twin has a... No, well, we have... We, well, God of War, we have our, our, a really damn good example with Tyr. Um, the way that he acts, recontextualizing a lot of the ways that he behaves, the things he says, even the subtitle clue. Um, there is... When that finally is revealed, it makes a lot of sense, and it's very satisfying when that happens. Um, because it, it creates a whole bunch of, it pulls things together. Um, but just saying all of a sudden, oh, it was a perfect twin who could act exactly like the other person. It's just not, there's nothing satisfying about that, and there's nothing clever about that. Motherfuckers were saying that a hundred years ago. What the hell happened? They warned you, Ryan. Question for the group. Sasabi or New Gundam? I don't know really don't, any of those things. I've heard of Gundams before. They're the big robots, but Maybe I just don't. Maybe they're like two don't. kinds of robots or something. Also, favorite what is Mac that? games. Is Toby? Titanfall Toby? doesn't count. <laughs> Why would you do that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Titanfall doesn't count. Because I, I don't know what I'd pick. Favorite I... mech games? Well, obviously Mario Party uh, 5. What, with the mech minigame? I yeah. don't know if I... I don't play a lot of mech mini games. I just don't. I don't know. play I enough of them to offer. I played a game called BattleTech that was like a like a uh, turn based like strategy game with mechs that was pretty cool. But I didn't play much of it. So, does the power armor and Fallout count? Uh, I don't see why that would. I imagine that he's talking about something like Armored Core or Zone of the Enders or something. I don't yeah, know. Then I'm I just don't play enough, mech games or like Mech really Warrior fun. or something like that. Yeah. Because, yeah, I would have picked Time <clears throat> Falls. <laughs> That's oh, what yeah, I easily. Picked. Um, I got some Pokemon, by the way. If you run a okay, sighting. Sure. Yeah. All right, so someone asked, thoughts on the designs of these new Pokemon? And they gave us some Pokemon, so let me, uh, let me copy and paste them real quick, because they won't let me drag them right into the chat. So this is their first one. This is Garganackle. Don't like I'm it. I'm not a fan, no. Not a fan of that at all. Can't say that I'm a fan. I feel like um, it could have worked. I feel like the bottom half is all right. The top half is becomes lame. I don't know. I agree. I like the color scheme. It's kind of rocky, um, but uh, I uh, it, it looks like the like the layers of sediment. Yeah. You know, if you go to the Grand Canyon or something, you see all the layers of stone and whatnot over the years. That's kind of neat. Uh, but I don't like the design. Yeah, pretty much from the like the legs and arms up. I don't like. Um, next one we have Golden Go. Uh, and I don't like yeah, it at 1, all. Here's 1,000. Here's uh, oh. Pokemon 1,000. Fuck on that. The Terrible the choice. Pokemon. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Yeah. This <laughs> next one... I don't like it either. Yeah. 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 Uh, the next one is uh, Bombardier. And uh, I kind of like this one. I don't mind him. It's uh, yeah. it's that cheeky grin. I like, I like that little cheeky grin out there. What I like is that this is sufficiently animal-like with a, a little with a twist. It's like an animal with a twist, and I think that's kind of the idea of what makes a good Pokemon. It's like an animal but different, you know. It, or it's yeah, based like off one of a kind modifier. Of it's it's recognizably a critter that's just sort of like a special little magical critter. Um, not too. I don't want to. I generally don't like them if they get too anthropomorphic or too human-like. Um, you don't like Hitmonlee and, next... and Hitmonchan? Uh, I've, I've, I, yeah. so, I so. like Matt, I like Matt Shop and like Machamp and that kind yeah, of, uh, those kind of are departed enough from it. Um, well, they're not even uh, kind of humanoid, they are, but yeah. Uh, and the last one is a Belly Bolt. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> He's all him. right. 
Of these, I'd say Bombardier is my favorite. Yes. The bird, the crane, probably the best one. I like it. I think the worst you is Pokemon on 1000 still. Yeah, that's just what it's terrible... I don't terrible... know what that... It's just... It's a gold sentient tree thing. Like, I don't... Yeah. It's like a... It's like a cereal mascot. <laughs> it's really awkward, because there's a lot of pressure for 1000. You never get another 1,000th Pokemon. And you should have made it something super cute and adorable and marketable. I think your two choices to... were super cute or really awesome and epic. Those are, like, your two choices. I think uh, I think cute's the way to go uh, because it's almost like a return to because there were so many cute Pokemon, uh, especially mm. early on. Well, you can do Pikachu both, right? is it can evolve from super. Yeah, cute. exactly. It can evolve. It, it can really evolve. Cool, yeah, yeah. one thousand, one thousand one, one thousand two are the trio of you know mm. the yeah yeah. Well, there you have it. Uh, Miles is actually pretty brilliant because he got away with two murders and would have gotten away with a third save for a magical diary. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, Miles is very selectively stupid, but his selective mm -hmm. stupidity is, like, mind-bogglingly stupid. I mean, yeah, because the, they are kind of correct in the, even by the end of the film, he's getting away with his murders. Yeah. It's because he's occasionally pretty clever and forms, like, you know, he figures things out very quickly. I mean, the fact that it's like, oh, the lights are going to go off. This will be a great opportunity for me to use it to pretend I'm panicked, run off, kill whoever this person is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's some quick thinking. He's going to have to, because if they do come through into the courtroom and tell, like, everybody, oh, he did all of the evil things, he's going to, if he gets a good lawyer, law team together... Could he then, like, sue them for, well, lies, basically? Yeah, like, for defamation. Yeah, right? Like, how do they probably be able to win with the evidence. their claims? Yeah, because they can't... I mean, almost they certainly he'll get shit. her for... I mean, she's going to go to jail for ages for just all the destruction of property and the Mona Lisa and all that. <clears> I mean, yeah, and so found everything there, there what, so she's going to be like, yeah, I got murder. you. And he's going to have insane amounts of insurance for most of that stuff, probably. He's going to still have all of his money. Um, he's still going to be a super insanely rich guy. Uh, let's assume Clear doesn't take off as an energy source. He's still incredibly rich. Um, he's just going to get a new house. Um, and she's going to be in jail, and she's probably going to get murdered. For uh, destroying yeah. the Mona Lisa. If anyone finds out she's the girl who destroyed the Mona Lisa, she's done. Yeah, she's going to die. Uh, how do you feel about ketchup? This is important. Um... A little bit of ketchup's all right. It's fine here and there, uh, very selectively applied. Obviously, you never put it on something like a steak, but on some, no, no. but on some things like you know maybe a hot dog here and there, or uh, maybe a little bit on a uh, on a burger could be okay. But I'm not really big. Sometimes on fries, but hmm. generally no, not a big ketchup guy. You don't like ketchup on it's your ice cream? You don't like a nice uh, tomato glaze on your ice cream? I'm weird like that. I will say that in every instance where the choice is between tomato sauce, which is ketchup, and uh, barbecue sauce, I will always pick barbecue sauce, like, every single time. Um, uh, when you say like, tom I don't... tomato sauce and well, ketchup are different. Oh, I always figured they were exactly the same thing. Like, over here, people put tomato sauce on, <clears> like, a hot dog, or put tomato sauce on a sausage, put tomato sauce on a burger. Yeah, the so, names are interchangeable they, over here, pretty much. It's it's the whole jelly jello like jam th situation again. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure tomato sauce is ketchup. Um, I th at I least think it's what we call it. Uh, so ketchup is over here. If you say ketchup, then you're going to get a very smooth and um, uh, what's the best way to describe them? They're both obviously primarily virtually all tomato. But tomato sauce will often have some other stuff in there. It won't be nearly as fine um, and churned as ketchup will be, and they'll have a little. Oh, they'll have okay. Well, so then things. our version of tomato sauce is ketchup. Like it'll be basically like a very fine kind of like sauce. Like it doesn't have other little bits and pieces in it, or like you know herbs or anything. It's just like basically like very smooth like tomato thing. Yeah, it, I. Uh, so it sounds like a terminology thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I, I, nevertheless, I will make the same point, regardless of whether it's ketchup, tomato sauce, or whatever. I'd always prefer barbecue sauce, like every time. Pretty much, um, ketchup is really. I mean, it's it's pretty ubiquitous because it it tastes okay. It goes with a decent amount of mm. things, and it's super yeah. cheap. But yeah. yeah, if you can get a burger you with, be as... it with a steak, though, holy shit! Oh yeah, never have it with a steak. A lot of the times, you just have a steak with maybe just a little bit of like garlic butter on it, or a little bit of light seasoning or something. Um, you don't want to cover up the steak taste. You want something that's complementary to it. Um, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, there, there's plenty of other things that I'd have instead of ketchup. Uh, first, Synthetic Man to the Jews, then Organized Chaos to you guys, now this guy to Drinker, start of the EFAP hit piece arc. Fuck no, I am... I get no, tired I... of it, it hit pieces so quickly. <laughs> we just uh... move on. Um, this one just says, neither do you, buddy. I assume it's something to do with what Killer Garbage said. That'd Probably. Be my guess. Um, just popping in to ask this question. What would you do with a real-life death notebook? Probably have to have a... Hmm. I need to find some very uh, smart I think people I fundamentally... and book some I... theory with them. Yeah. I, 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 to... I think, uh, I would fundamentally disagree with the notion of using it. I, like, if you... I think that if, like, you want to participate in society and you, like, believe in the justice system and that that's a, that's a thing that exists and functions and that whatever deficiencies it has can be, like, changed through legislation or, you know, policy, like, that it can be, you know, changed in a way to be better. But, like, having it and doing basically what Light Yagami did where he's like, yeah, I'm the sole arbiter of right and wrong. And then, of course, the fact that he would then use the death note to basically kill anybody who was, like, trying to figure out that it was him who did it, right? Like, and the... I mean, yeah, like, I, uh, I, uh, I don't think I like the idea at all of using it. Um, I think that, I think that would be the kind of thing that I would, like, immediately hand over to, like, authorities. I wonder if what there's going to be extreme like, circumstances, um, though. Yeah, like, what about really evil dictators or things like that? I guess that's the part where it starts to get more challenging, but it, it almost seems like, um... And hell, even giving it to anybody else, it might be a thing where, like, if you understand it and believe it to be functional, it might be like, I'm just gonna, like, bury this. Like, I'm gonna, for for as long as this is bound to me, I'm gonna bury it so that nobody uses it. That, I might, think be, that, that might be what I'd do. Yeah, I'd have to think about what I'd do. Um, there is a very compelling case, I think, that I could make for myself, where if you have extremely powerful, evil people who are in places, like, whether they're, like like African warlords or super evil dictators, things of that nature. Um, you know, you, you'd think about it or um, like, you know, like terrorists, like you know, Osama bin Laden, you know, Taliban slash, you know, ISIS, like commanders, things of that nature. Um, it, it, there's, there's definitely a compelling case to be made. Uh, people that, you know, but you know, as for, I'd never give it to the, to a government. You know, because I just don't That's another trust problem. the government yeah, that yeah. much, you know. Um, There's just no one you'd want to even give it to, really, because it's, it's super no, corrupt. I, I don't think like so. That. Yeah, well, I think I'm I mean, better than the average person, and even <clears throat> then, I'm like, I have to really think about, well, you know, what I'm going to do. Part of the problem with giving it to anyone is that they're going to have to consider, I might kill you so that no one knows I have it. Yeah, um... It's kind of like a, a persistent thing, right? In Death Note, is everybody who gets their hands on it is uh like immediately feels compelled to essentially use it and like do what Light did or do what Light says, um, like every single time. At the um, same time, you can do some real good with that potentially. So. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't even like the the point of uh of the manga. I haven't read the manga, but I, as I understand it, like the guy who made it basically said like I wasn't trying to like do a philosophical thing here about like the notion of justice or like who was entitled to make these kinds of choices. I just wanted to put two crazy cool smart there, people. Yeah. Oh, they're just two. It's basically just a cat and mouse game between two really smart people. So much so that there's a question of whether like L really is that interested in the notion of justice or it's just like this game that he wants to play to. Cause like, of course with light, it's like, it's pretty obvious that like, you don't give a shit about the notion of justice. You just like being powerful. Um, because, of course, the thing with Light Yagami is he seems to, like, take pretty great joy in killing people who are obviously good, who only... The, the only crime, the only wrong thing they did was get in his way. Um, 
Like he's basically he's he's like a supervillain. Um but but then like the thing that he tries to use to justify it is that like it got results, like crime was decreased because of it, because everybody was terrified of of uh of Kira, like as an as like an entity. It certainly I uh it would certainly be something that I imagine that anybody would have to like seriously think about for a while if yeah. they got if they, if... if they got handed something like that. In theory, someone who's extremely principled and wise with its usage could do incredible amounts of good with essentially no uh, no ill effects. It's just whether that person actually has it. Um, well, whether or not that power is going to corrupt them, right? It's the old meme. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, absolutely. It's like, well, I don't know, man. The Death Note's pretty, it's pretty close to absolute power. Because it's not only a thing that can kill people, it's also a thing that can be used to basically mind control people to some extent as well. Um, and, and the fact that it's got the Shinigami as an element too, right? That that gives you access to a lot of information potentially. Uh, especially if one were to take the Shinigami eyes deal that gives them all of the information they could ever want basically on any individual to be able to use the notebook on anybody that they ever saw. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a lot of power. And I suppose the case with Light Yagami, it turned him insane. Um, Brian's selection of Blackbird by the Beatles is a heavy-handed attempt to make parallel between Cassandra and Helen, slash Helen, and uh, Authorine Foster, the first black student at newly desegregated University of Alabama. Bird, being Brit slang for a young woman, Paul wrote the song about the brave Blackbird on the news, just another example of Ryan prioritizing themes over characters in his writing. It's just dumb. I think some of the references he has are top notch, but it just that's not how you tell a story. Those are things people spotted in in uh, Glass Onion. It filled like the movie details subreddit. Like, oh, this paint in the background. It refers to this, 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 and you can connect that to the movie with this, 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 this. Because the movie is fucking nonsense. I don't know. Need a little bit more than that. That was hollow to me. A wings quote of the day. When do I take down my Halloween decorations? When they fall off the wall. You know, I believe him. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Bonus. Dude, I'm not a fucking diabetic. Is he not? Well, I'm... Good news, I guess. I don't know. I, just, uh... I mean, I'm glad. I'm sorry, he should yeah. count his blessings. Holy shit. Ten seconds is all I need, pillar of garbage. Say that at some point. <laughs> did he? I don't think so, did he? Or is that that's a that's a reference, right? I'm just whatever the reference is eludes me right now. If I believe Miles was stupid enough to let Daniel Craig stay on the island, then I don't believe he's smart enough to distract long enough to burn the napkin. If you set them up as dumb, they can't start doing smart things. Yeah, we talked about that plenty. He yes. is selectively very intelligent and selectively remarkably stupid. It was the same for the arrogance thing people say. Character is it doesn't even it doesn't match with people who have particular fields of, you know, expertise where they know something, you know, some things really, really well, but they don't know other things. Uh, like someone who's like you can have a character who's very stupid, but they've been like a particular like a craftsman or an electrician or a plumber or a you know carpenter for their whole life, and they're very, very talented at that, but they are stupid. You know, that that's different than what we saw in the movie, which seems to be random. Um, yeah, you could have, like, a... Just bouts of incredible intelligence. A child character that's, like, really good at maybe something that's taught in school, but they have, like, no sense of how the world works. So they, they can come across as stupid with certain elements like that. The, these are ways you write gaps in knowledge. I'm trying to talk about this. Like, stupid is pretty generalized. You don't really... Usually more specific than that. You don't have stupid character. You do it in like comedies and stuff, which apparently this film claims to be. Allegedly. I like how this video has become a rally point for kiddies who wish uh, Critical Drinker would slip enough one day for a giant gotcha moment, but had to settle for this. Works the same for all creators. There are a lot of people who hate you no matter what, and they love to just you know, try and burn you down. I don't think drink a kid that much, but made for some fun for us. Uh, a person's suspension of disbelief is subjective in certain stories. People like that go were entertained as opposed to us who hated it and could see all of the logical inconsistency. 
Um, I would say that the suspension of disbelief is subjective in the sense that everybody's line is going to be different uh, subconsciously. Yeah. Uh, and and that line may well vary based on their knowledge, right? Like somebody who, uh, I mean, the common meme, right? Where like somebody who works in the field of medicine watches a medical show and is like, that's not how that works. They wouldn't do it like that. If you did that, you would cause them a serious injury. Like those types of things will immediately pull them out of it where it's like, yeah, right. This is like a thing that was written by people who didn't really don't have as, like that familiarity with this material. Meanwhile, a lot of people are watching and just accept it. And then if it's their field of uh, expertise or something that they know a lot about, it will be, you know, something that they can accept or just like general things about, hmm, I don't know if I believe that somebody would do that where somebody else would. So yeah, like everybody's lying for what will snap them out of a, out of a story is, is like subjective in the sense that not everybody has the same line, but everybody has a line. At some point it will be, too much and it would just be like oh, okay like you check out What's maybe it? there is someone out there who doesn't have a line maybe maybe like anything ever <laughs> you know it's like it doesn't matter oh, yeah that but person I'm exists sure that and they'll people... say i can't take movies seriously because they're not real or whatever right it's horror games don't scare me because you respawn <laughs> <laughs> no one would say that no that's silly What's an example where their arrogant would be a good defense? My example is Jafar not immediately killing Aladdin when he easily could. Uh, Jafar's a pretty good example. Um, his, his arrogance is his downfall. I think that comes up a lot with uh, villains sparing heroes. You need to properly set it. Uh, we, we've there used it before, but um, Civil War, right? When uh, Crossbones... If, if Crossbones were like, must kill Captain America, that's it. That's as far as it goes then the scene doesn't work quite as well as Crossbones is fucking furious that he got mangled by Captain America and so he wants to beat him to death himself. He hurt him. Yeah, he really wants to hurt him. Not just take him out. But part of what motivates him to do that as well is that he's got a safety net. No matter what happens, he can always detonate himself. Mm -hmm. So like that, you got that backup. Meanwhile, there's a lot of villains who... Um, it's, almost, it's almost like if they don't set it up and they just start monologuing or whatever, that's like a trope of... Ugh, you know, you could have killed him, but now you've lost your chance because... Well, you know what? Well, oh, actually, I'm not sure if people agree with this one, because we're talking about Death Note. One of the big things that trips light up is that he needs to tell Nier that he won. He can't resist telling him that he won, because that's the kind of person he is. He's so arrogant that he needs to let somebody know that he beat them, even when they're about to die. And because he did that, it's like the final nail in the coffin of like, oh, you're guilty when it doesn't work. That might be an example. But I know that people don't like the ending of Death Note in the, like, the way that it was set up, so, yeah, maybe people don't agree with that one. I don't know if Oberyn Martell would count as arrogance. Game of Thrones, he wins against the mountain, but then he starts long logging and gets him killed. Mm. But, um, doing it because he's been desperate to get this victory for his whole life, basically. Oh, well, a long yeah, it's uh, yeah. There's there's plenty of examples of characters whose hubris is their downfall, um, where like they're just so arrogant that they they like miss what's in front of them. They're so obsessed with showing how they're better or how they won that they uh that they screw things up. And I mean that's you know that happens. And then you have like, it was arrogance that made Huck shoot the planet, <laughs> not the ship. That doesn't <laughs> yeah, make sense, that one does doesn't. That doesn't that make sense. Doesn't follow. Yeah doesn't follow i don't like how arrogance is used as an excuse for all bad behavior yeah it needs to tie into something that has to do with like some sort of personal pride or the need for recognition something something like that the need for people to know how good you are there's got to be a connection drawn so i think that's the big thing right there's a level of insecurity that's nested in the notion of arrogance like arrogance is not something that's usually described like you wouldn't describe, like, Einstein as arrogant about his, like, you know, understanding of physics, right? Like, that doesn't really make sense. Like, he was no. confident about his understanding of physics. I mean, um, he said very nice things about, you know, like, physics. um... Well, he said uh, plenty of nice things about his wife and how she was the one who was good at maths and not him. As well and, as... And yet, and yet, like, he was incredibly competent. Um, I don't want flat earth debates, because flat earthers are uh, dumb... They often say that, well, there's a quote from Einstein that gets brought up in his defense where he says that, you know, Newton's contributions to science will like never not be, you know, valuable. We're just, we're just building off of the incredible framework that Newton, you know, made everything from relativity and space time stuff. And that's, that's uh, not a replacement for Newton. It's building off of it. 
Yeah. I, I guess that the point being drawn there is that generally when we refer to a character as confidence, it's like, well, their 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 sense of self is well founded, whereas like arrogance usually describes an unfounded sense of self worth, uh, an excessive sense of self worth, a level of insecurity perhaps about uh about yeah. their competency that they need to boast about it and showcase it to people. Please tell Ruin yeah, to write better antagonists so his protagonists have more to overcome in the end. Stop writing easy layups. I agree. Well, that's how a lot of the old mysteries were. Like, the 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 bad guy, the villain, was really clever, but, you know, the detective was just a little bit more clever. That's the, uh, that's the whole thing with Columbo, right? Is that often the people who orchestrate the crimes are, like, very clever, and what they've orchestrated is, like, really airtight. And then unassuming Columbo... This salt of the earth Columbo just shows up and outwits them, um, and they they don't realize it until it's too late. Like that. That's but but like it's what makes it all the more satisfying is the fact that like the villains themselves are really intelligent and competent. It's just the triumph of the hero is made all the better if like the villain was hard to defeat. It's the same reason that like the final boss being difficult to defeat, right? And that level of accomplishment and pride that you take when you finally win. It's like that shit was hard. Yeah, like that would—that wasn't easy. A funny thing that can happen if you kill the boss straight away. You're just like, oh, oh, damn. Okay. I was kind of ready for a, f a fight there, or a challenge. Yeah, yeah, I did it. <laughs> Woohoo! Beatles didn't want this. No, they didn't. <laughs> you, why did you tell John Lennon about this film? And he's like, oh, okay. Uh, well, Muller, assuming Pillar isn't this trendy essayist who hates debates and off-script opinions, he might come on to talk on a later episode. Maybe he will. Mm. Who knows? Uh, cover Ben Shapiro's Hot D video, it's worse than the Batman video? Oh no. Ben, what are you doing? We, we're kind of done with the uh, Hot D, at least for, for now. At least for at least now. For now. In a couple of years, you know. Yep, we will hey, be back. Maybe Ben we'll... Shapiro will have like a really bad take on another movie. <laughs> you know? Maybe. We'll... Man, we'll be watching House of the Dragons alongside of Rings of Power again. That could be. Yeah, and maybe Andor as well. That might be, you know, by then too. It'd be so funny if we had like a round two right. for all of them. <laughs> At the same time, like... yeah. I'm very interested because like, I want to see House of the Dragon more, obviously. But I think I'm most curious about Rings of Power and what they'll try and do. The problem is that they started filming like very shortly after the first season had premiered. The scripts were yep. written. I'll phrase that differently. They started stone. filming shortly after their failure and they haven't properly recognized how much of a failure it is. So No, until it was too late that now they're locked in with whatever they've already made uh, or whatever, whatever they've already written. I think, uh, I'm pretty sure Gary said it a few times, right? It will only be by season three that you start to fully notice any real changes as a consequence of the reception of season one. I think it just logistically makes sense. It's going to be the reality. Yeah. They'll have to wait. Uh, Pillar of Garbage lied to you about Bob Gothman. <laughs> Apparently, well, but he oh, put yeah. the fucking citation. Well, yeah, yes, like, yeah, what she said was, was way better. Screen. But see, the thing about it is, if someone said like, "So he's a liar," I'd be like, "He put it on screen. He's just an idiot." Like, I think what happened was he saw the quote that he wanted and then failed to account for the broader context in which that quote was couched. Definitely. Which um is it's not the way that you do citations. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you're also writing you want to read essay. the thing you're citing. Well, yeah, dear you God, if it contradicts your point, don't what... put it on screen. No, of course not. But again, <laughs> that's like part of that's part of writing like an essay for real, as you like actually read the primary sources <laughs> instead of just pulling like one or two quotes that benefit you while ignoring the broader context. Because that broader context might help you. You know, part of the value of having these sources is you might learn something from them, not just use them to reinforce a point that you've already come to conclude. Yeah, it's it's. It's shit when you're just like, I already believe this thing. You know what? This guy said that, and he agrees with me, well, so there you go. It's, it's just fundamentally a shit way to think. Well, like, do you think it's he just knows a bad that, way of um, thinking. Do you think he knows the drink is a published author? Uh, no. Probably not, because, yeah, that was something that he used, right? To def Which is funny, right? There's, like, Ryan Johnson is a... Is a fucking like major hollywood director like and what what could this like what does that mean you know exactly well at the yeah, end of the day like, 
Well, Bob, just, Bob must be correct because she's a published author. And it's like, the fuck? Oh, and also it's like, what are you implying about like self-published authors? Like, what are you, what are you suggesting? I, I hate this sort of elite, like, it's just stories. Like, regardless of the means by which people disseminate them. So anyway. Yeah, but, but, but to wrap up that point, yeah, like when you've already formed a conclusion and you're seeking the information that just reinforces your perspective, it's just a bad way to think. Like, that's just a fundamentally bad way of thinking. You don't do that. I heard Destiny yeah. say it when I was watching his, uh, did a little prep stream for this debate. And he was saying, like, don't just stop because you read something that kind of agrees with what you want it. You got to keep going. Yeah. Yes. You need to challenge your perspectives. You need to test them. Because if you don't, you end up in a situation where, like, you're, you're just, like, ill-equipped to defend you your perspectives. You end up like pillar of garbage, saying an exploding building yeah, couldn't harm anyone. Uh, yeah, because yeah, the, the conclusion was glass onion is good, drinker is wrong. And so, like, anything that drinker says that contradicts the notion that glass onion is good must be wrong. It's kind of like, that's essentially the through line. And like, yeah, look at what that gets you. Um, Lord Longbong of Mewslington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'll be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Mm. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Ah, oh, hello. Oh, I could see that there might, thing. There might be a Long yeah. Kong. When there's less going be. on, of course. We are course. fond of Long and Kong, so... Yes. Sounds like the perfect duo. Peter Jackson. Good guy. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a bad idea. Haha, <laughs> Pillar of Garbage. Literally just saw this massive video calling out Smudboy as an alt-right YouTuber. Got a good laugh out of that. Hi, ER. Yeah, I don't know what Smudboy's up to these days. I don't okay. yeah, know what's going on with Smudboy. No clue. <laughs> Um, please go and read this guy's recent community post on YouTube, especially the part about upcoming videos. I'm assuming it. I remember people talking about he's like super political. Uh, it's kind of the idea. Really? Yeah. He, uh, he's hadn't hadn't a guest. It's. It, I was about to say, kind of. You can kind of smell it a little bit with the whole like mm. glass onion is a good way to show idiot right wingers who don't know the points of stories. Like, okay, dokie. All right. Um, but you idiot. showed us not that we're idiot right wingers. Well, that's the thing. I, I, we're just normal idiots, and I, uh, I, I don't ever want to be like, no, it's just bad though. That's all. That's all. Can we thing. just talk about how it's bad? And it's like, yeah, but the people I disagree with on other things think it's bad. It's like fucking hell. Like, can we just can we, can we just stop? Oh, uh, oh, uh, indeed. Uh, everyone would already know why Andy wouldn't be invited. They colluded with Miles to leave with her with nothing, so it wouldn't be suspicious to anyone else there. It wouldn't be suspicious to anyone else there. What now, the invitation? I'm not sure exactly what, they, what they're saying with this. To It might be in relationship to the, is it more or less suspicious that she gets an um, invitation? Like I said, it depends on what the state of their relationship was, and we don't really get that information. No. This movie was so offensive to logic, it almost finally convinced my lazy ass to start my own critique channel. Like, th that's what happens, dude. It's the right thing. It's a common along. inspiration, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you feel like, I gotta say something. I gotta be saying the things. Ambulance Chaser is a nickname for Giannos, for fuck's sake. Um, I thought that they were specific uh, journalists that were given that sort of title, like the Nightcrawler type people. That seems like it'd make more sense. Not just like all journalists. Yeah. Well, yeah, that doesn't really follow, right? It's sports journalists, are they ambulance chasers, typically? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe some of them. Well, yeah, I guess when somebody gets injured, they're just running up. It's like, so how do you think this is going to affect your season? I don't know, man. Like, I just want to go to pretty, hospital, pretty, you know? Pretty significantly, I think. But for the time being, I just want to, you know, get my spine fixed. If you, right now, if you I just need mind. some drugs. Okay. Yeah. Um, not sure how no one else has told you, but fax machines are analog. Oh, yeah, we did read this one out. Um, yeah. We, we concluded we apparently no they can both be analog or digital, and it's dependent on a couple of... Um, like, there are portions of this technology at, uh, at several points, and all can be considered digital or analog, depending on what technology you're using. Yes. The problem with them, 
a Ryan Johnson script is you don't know. You don't know if he's trying to make it so that he's stupid or that he's not. You don't know. You really don't uh-huh. know. And even when they tell you, you just don't know. Because all the people who talk all and all, on and on and on about show don't tell will believe what they're told and not what they're shown. Uh, fax machines were a joke about a phone company, Apple, not wanting the killer to have their phone in the movie. Well, then why didn't they just use an Android or a non-Apple smartphone? Or just phone. You could just have a phone. Or just brand. a phone. So this is another movie where Ryan calls the audience stupid for caring. Wow, I wonder why that would be. Amazing anyone defends it. Well, Sonia, it's you a really, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a bold strategy. It's like insult the people who care and really look into what you actually created. Sure, it'll work out. Um, she was so clever, she out, was outwitted by a Dumbo. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, that's, that's the scene where she's killed, and then he's like, she was just so clever, she died. Doesn't work, Ryan. <laughs> it doesn't fucking oh, work. Really, really stupid, actually. Ryan. Um, only problem I had with Puss in Boots Last Wish is the use of straight up instead of literally, but I guess that's why they did that. Still is that what you're... Around. Okay. When death says I'm straight up like death. Oh, when he describes himself as I'm death straight up. What's wrong with death, that? Death straight up. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Instead of saying literally, it's, it's death it's, it's literally. I, I prefer yeah. straight up and to, to literally. It sounds uh, I'm like death it straight up. Yeah, it sounds more casual and like he's not he's not trying to be grand about it. He's just like, no, that's just I'm Yeah. Dead. Man, he was cool. <laughs> like I've seen so much praise for him online. The funny thing is, I've seen almost equal amounts of praise for Jack Horner as well. Yes. A lot of people love him. I want to say some other things, but I'm going to save it. You have to make love to one Bionicle. Which one and why? I don't know. The warm one. The softest one. They're all pretty soft, right? No, I think they're made out of, like... Really oh, hard plastic. Damn it. plastic pieces. Maybe if you find, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. I don't know how they even reproduce, like canonically. Bionically. Bionically. Bion- surely, Bionicle evolution. Surely he has to have cameras as part of the deal of having the Mona Lisa. Um, fuck you for even thinking. What's wrong with you? Like, I don't even know. Do you remember the video where he's like, who cares if he has cameras? He's not going to be checking them all weekend. It was like, that doesn't even address, like, fucking 20% of the issues of whether or not he has cameras. Right. No, if he has doesn't. cameras, everything's over. It's all recorded. Mm-hmm. Unless they're like, you destroyed the, the camera itself, so that means all the footage is gone. Uh, like whatever. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman rules. Oh, no, yeah, right. just no, like no, Wonder no, Woman. No, 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 no. In Knives Out, they do. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> he destroys Why the... Why do people uh, think that's how cameras work? He destroys the medical facility, and I think another cop says, like, uh, well, what about the security footage? And the camera pans up to the, the camera, and it's, like, destroyed. And it's like... <laughs> Why would you say that? A Clinton staffer worked on those fax machines. Well... Fax don't care about your f- critiques. That's why he has fax machines. They're just fax only. They just spit in facts. Facts. To err is human. To forgive is divine. To er is supremely autistic. Also, hi, ragagagagagagagagagagaga. Hello. Uh, just wanted to say, whenever I wonder why I hate this movie, I'm reminded Seven Psychopaths mocks all these tropes ten years ago while being fun. I fucking adore that movie for being That's a great movie. A movie that's about a guy like writing the movie as it's happening almost with like I want to be intellectual. I want to I want to get people to think and then his friend is just like, "No, action movie. The action scenes. Uh, we got to have more guns." Everyone should see that instead of Glass Onion. Absolutely. Uh any contrivance is justified as long as that's what's happened in the story. Pillars of garbage. Yeah, what did he say? If that's it not happened, a, contrivance. It can't be a contrivance. That's something that happens. Yeah. What the fuck? It's not a contrivance. It's what happened. <laughs> what? So stupid. Thank you, film film reviewer on YouTube. <laughs> the absolute state of it. 
Uh, kick Mole and make E.R. the host. Maybe one day. Shot through the pad, and you're to blame. Darling, you give pens a bad name. Wait, why pens? That gun gives bullets a bad name. Yeah. Uh, fun factoid, the most common first words babies speak are tell me absolutely everything you know about Matthew Arnold or I'll pack this diaper. I remember reading that out, it was funny. Matthew Arnold came up on a real BBC episode <laughs> suggesting it in Super Chats. Like, well, you must know Matthew Arnold, of course. Everyone's familiar with uh, good old Arnie. The work of Matt Arnold. Yeah. Matthew Arnold is God's older brother. <laughs> he is indeed. The bullet was just really stupid, guys. Y y dude, I, I wish that's where we could be at with a lot of these. Where's the response videos where they just go, you know what? True. That thing was dumb that that happened. Because someone might be like, well, how else do you do it? And it's like, how else do I do it? Like, how, how does she survive getting shot at by him in that scene? And it's like, your only solution was a magical notepad that is able to stop the bullet and it's in a place that didn't even look like he could shoot. That's it? That's all you got? I don't think of anything else? I was just thinking, by the way, we didn't even bring this up, but they stopped in, in direct sort of line of sight to him in that place, when if they'd stopped on the stairs, like, you know, two meters up or down, it would've been much more awkward for him, wouldn't it? No. Oh. They stopped on the again? stairs. Both doing, gee. <laughs> you gotta say it again, dude. Say it again. Very well, I guess I could. Uh, I said it's kind of a coincidence, right, in a, in a good way for him that they stopped where they did, because if they were two meters above or below on the staircase, uh, it would have been an awkward shot for him. Yeah! Yeah, it would have been. Uh, yeah, it would have been. Mean, yeah. Because, you know, he's using that where he's shooting from as a way of covering up who he is, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, you wouldn't need to do they any of that. They wouldn't have needed to do that if, if you just killed just them shot. both. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Quick snap equals Lev being conveniently out of frame and never being acknowledged by Ellie until after the Abbey flashback. I, I guess we're doing Last of Us equivalent with, uh, with the, the fucking bullshit that Ryan pulls with us. The well, Last hey, Onion. Last That's topical. A contrived out mystery. Contrived. I I feel like contrived out. That's that's giving them too much credit. These films. Yeah, there's shit tons of holes. It's not just that it's like a stretch. Yeah. Uh, best villains are smart as hell, but are brought down by a character flaw. Movies where the point is everyone is stupid miss out on a whole world of options. Yep. It's okay. It violates logic and physics because it's verisimilitude. You keep using that word. I don't think you know what it means. <laughs> If it violates logic and physics, it's probably not verisimilitude. I hope the explosion didn't burn any Matthew Arnold books. Me too. He's probably got lots of Matthew Arnold stuff in that in that room. Love Matthew. Uh, notepads discovered in 1915. Franz Ferdinand visits Sarajevo in 1914. So you're saying that. It was that event that prompted the creation of the notepad that can block out bullets. That's pretty cool. History for you guys. The assassin proof notepad. Thankfully, the pistol is a 762 Tokarev, so kind of low powered. It's possible after going through glass, it gets barely stopped. Still super lucky. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 9 by 18 is going straight through a uh, notepad. Is, uh, is the one that's used in the film then one of your lower level? I don't powers? know specifically. I'd have to look it up, but it clearly is more than a 22. So it's probably either a 9 by 18 or a 9 by 19. The typical 9 millimeter, when people say 9 millimeter, they almost 100% almost of the time mean 9 by 19 millimeter. Now there's the the macro now there's the there's the Makarov round, which is 9 by 18. It's just a little bit smaller. There's also 380s, which are a little bit smaller than 9mm. But the Tokarev round is, I believe, 762 by 25 millimeter, and it's somewhat comparable to a 45. Um, but either way, all of the rounds that I just mentioned, they're going through a tiny little notebook. 
Yes. Um, it was Hymnal, so it was the Power Jeebus that saved her. Aw. Nice of Jesus. That was very nice of Jesus. He should have stopped the first murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Duke dying is and the just... the second murder. That one too, probably, yeah. Uh, Duke dying is just wish fulfillment for Ryan Johnson. The worse a writer is, the more you can see the intentions behind their hack scribblings. I mean, you, the whole thing is just a weird, like, expression of interests, and uh, I suppose you could say that kind of applies to all writers' work. They usually do a better job of hiding it. If anyone wants an example of Buddy's Dumb being the joke being done correctly, check out Xavier Renegade Angel. Also have Destiny on again, please. Xavier Renegade Angel. It's an old Adult Swim show. That was, that was, a, that was a show. I haven't all, heard right? of it. Have I've you? heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I haven't heard of it. Uh, I don't blame you. I've referenced it once or twice in EFAT, but it very rarely comes up. Uh, it's uh, one of those old cartoon net or uh, Adult Swim shows like... Um, uh, like um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where it's kind of like an absurdist sort of comedy. Right. Uh, and yeah, uh, Destiny will likely come on again someday. Who knows what the topic will be? Uh, wait, I thought portraying famous millionaires as stupid was reactionary when Drinker did it. Now uh, it's what the whole movie was about. Uh, you call him reactionary for that? I, I don't. Uh, why did Miles kill Andy instead of burning the napkin? Leaving Andy alive would be the easier, cleaner, more arrogant option. Correct, he should never have fucking killed her in the first place. That was crazy. He should have uh, tried desperately to find out where that napkin is, that's all. And Because he apparently found it, right? He killed her and then... He did find it, oh, yeah. yeah. Rags, he obviously meant to... Uh, he maxed out the Skyrim pickpocket tree. He could have stolen his clothes if he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, steal a clothes off of somebody. So good you pickpocketing it. Uh, does anyone think that the director believes that if the movie makes too much sense, then people will guess spoilers like with The Last Jedi? Fucking hope not. That's, well, but I that's, certainly hope it's not. It's a terrible, terrible... Every once in a while you see it, where it's like, oh, if, if no one ever complained that a movie made too much sense. I think that... um. If you're at that point as a writer where you're like, I can't write it so that I can keep it a mystery until the end, but it's also set up, I just can't. Then it's like, oh man, I might be in the wrong field of work. And then they'd be like, no, I can't possibly be. And you're like, oh, okay. Ryan's biggest sin wasn't even TLJ. It was squandering Ana de Amas in Knives Out. She's both physical and charismatic perfection. Brian's a monster. All right. Maybe I'm tripping, but I could have sworn Ralph the Movie Maker once said, who cares about the problems, just shut up and enjoy the movie on The Dark Knight Rises. Wow. Oh. Hey, I mean, all movies are awesome at that point. Yeah. Why even try? Why even have a good script? Why give a fuck? I don't know. Just shut up and enjoy it. Just hit the switch on your brain that's in joy mode. Star Wars Theory. No screws, no bricks. Honestly, we need more screws with Bix. Peep, 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 oh, hee, hee. But it would be fun to see y'all cover Star Wars Theory's video on Andor. Uh, it's a doubt. I think it's a stream, so doubtful. Uh, maybe a clip in like a medley or something. Yeah, it could be a clip in a medley. People saying this bad, that bad, with no elaboration is wrong. Also, him describes thing he dislikes with a single piano note. Ah, but that means you don't understand. He's trying to say that Drinker's line applies to himself. Dun, 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 dun. And we were super clever and went, it applies to you as well. Dun, 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 dun. Keeps all going. Remember the time when Plinkett fricked his cat? Can't say the other word. What makes it funny to me is how he carries on as if nothing happened. Yeah, in the middle of the video is an extensive yeah. skit of him fucking the cat. It's, uh... You know, he's... It's really, uh... Yeah, it's, it's, um... You just can't get away with that these days, you know? You just can't fuck the cat anymore. Oh. Uh, That's this video same. gives me Patricia Tax on EFAP video vibes. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, just the... It's the super, like, someone who's very, like, ideologically blinded, not really bright, but they think they're super clever. And yeah, it's really, just really selective nice editing and then reframing of the points. It's like, it's all standards. Yeah. It's how a lot Maybe of people just do response videos, and it sucks. Yeah. 
Just can be really effective, though. My issue with drinkers was small, like, hey, the friends weren't responsible for Helen's arson. They just did a perjury. They can no longer be proven because Napkin dead. Not this tismy bad faith crap. Um... Friends weren't responsible for Helen's arson. They just did a perjury. They can no longer be proven because the napkin is dead. No, the, the perjury well, comes when they up, change their story. But, yes. Um, especially if they basically the admit that they lied. Right? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're saying, haha, we're going to fuck over Miles now, and it's like, you can't. I mean, you you're can, gonna have to, just, like, you're going to have to accept the consequences of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Miles would lose the insurance claim on the Mona Lisa because he added an override button to the glass box. I I don't know what's going to happen in totality with with all of it, but you know that something significant will happen in terms of um. She was instrumental in destroying it. She pressed the button to enable that to happen. Yeah, she did it. Yeah, as much as I don't know if that would actually null and void the entire insurance. Regardless, she's the one that's going to have to suffer for this. Yes. It's complex. Well, so this is the thing, right? Like, to dig into this, we need to know more about all of the contracts, all the information. It's like, we're never going to get that mm -hmm. information, so... I play vague with that on purpose because it just makes it easier for him to do whatever he wants. Uh, thank you for covering this, Fool. As someone who's familiar with this stuff, I don't suggest watching more if you value your sanity. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, and I just realized, by the way, that would only, um, affect the insurance on the Mona Lisa, if anything. You've got everything else in that room. Oh, well, yeah, there's this whole, you know, the house. <laughs> well, everything they destroyed, all those those pieces of artwork, I don't know how fucking, uh, how much they're worth. I don't know. it would be what millions. Of uh, just got back from Puss in Boots, easily on par with Spider-Verse. They're both very good. You guys should watch his video about Reva. So he's defending She-Hulk, Reva, and Glass Onion, huh? <laughs> what a combo. Does he have any correct opinions? God damn, man. Like, why do these people think they can do what they do? Why do they think that they have, like, the talent to just talk about media when they're so shit at it? Jesus, man. To be fair, that's what they say about people like us. They're just like, you have no yeah, media but... literacy. And it's like, all right, neither do you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you I go. can read the articles I put in my videos. Yeah, that'd be a, a good skill to have, I would say, yeah. Angry Joe said Andor was too boring. Full build up, uh, Joe. You don't get to the big O instantly. You gotta work for it. Hut cream. Hut cream. I agree, hut cream. Um, yeah, we've talked about it. It's unfortunate, the reception for Andor. Um, but there's, it's more than just people's perception of the show. It, uh, Disney did this to, to Andor, to be honest with you. They gave it a, a horrible position to start with, you know? Well... That actually catches us up with all of the glass oh, onion wow. ones. But we have a few uh, disparate rings of power ones, if you guys are on board. Them here now as well. I am, sure. Okay. Dirty, nasty proto hobbitses. We hate them. Feels weird to go from uh, glass onion. Yeah, back we to do. Rings. But yes, they're horrible, horrible they're people. They're a dirty, nasty, terrible people, and I hate them, and I hope they all die. Uh, what happened to the Overlord DVD guy? That is Doomcock. As far as I know, he's doing doing fine. He's uh, continuing yeah. on. I think the main content he does is sort of speculate on what's going to be happening next in the sort of meta of uh, the creation of lots of different things here and there, but I think he still does reviews as well. All I know from following on Twitter is that he is... Uh, Fucking furious that Picard season three is about to happen. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like. Obviously, I'm not going to watch it, but I'll probably watch people reviewing it, maybe. But I've heard that that's going to be the best of the three seasons. You excited, Rags? Mm. I'm very excited to watch Red Letter Media talk about how shit it is. Did they swear oh, it not. off? I think they are. Yeah, they they did swear it off. I think you're right. <laughs> well, we'll see. Oh fuck! What happened to that Jared guy? I miss him. He's out there doing his thing in the background somewhere, you know, he's walking on, commentating on things. I hope he's all right. Uh, also, EFAP movies, Ice Age, great movie. Well, we can we can make it an off. Find it with Shrek or something else. I remember watching Ice Age and Shrek back to back. One's cold, one's 
Like it's not swamps. so cold. Swamps are generally warm. Yeah. All the thoughts on once more with feeling. Uh, fantastic. Top tier. Uh, Possibly the best episode. Yeah, it's it does everything contender. you'd want a 40 minute fucking thing to do and it and it revolutionized a lot of people's opinions on that format because you, you, you sigh and then you go oh oh okay actually wait uh people often reference it as the good of, of that kind of thing there you go nice and vague you'll get more on that one day uh all right so devil fruit of the week would you guys eat this fruit remember if you lose the ability wait a minute it doesn't it doesn't say what the fruit does oh well then no I will not yeah, it explains fruit. the the devil fruit thing, but I don't see any. Maybe oh. they messed up. Does the next super chat have it? No. Mm. Well, in that case, uh, no, I won't eat a fruit. That means I can't swim. <laughs> That's all it does. Maybe it tastes real nice. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Snoop Dogg should have Gandalf. Ads will get it. Snoop Dogg should have Gandalf. I don't know either. I got no clue. Um, it'd be more interesting if Nori goes on the adventure she wants only to be stunned by danger. Direct contrast to Frodo and Bilbo's reluctance. Sure. I would take any story. It'd be nice. Any story would be nice. Yeah. I just don't want her to be, like, around. I hate her. <laughs> and virtually all the characters... I think that's the problem, is that I just hate all the characters. Yeah. That can be a problem. Hello, EFAP. I have a friend who works in programming at YouTube Live. Do you have any legitimate feedback or feature requests for the platform? Um, I don't know. Stop, like, demonetizing people for, for no reason. Stop banning accounts based on mass flagging. Send um, the cap on live from 12 hours to 24, please. I don't even know how difficult that'll be for you to pull off over the do it. Um the page for uh super chats slash monitoring the live stream, it like bugs out, and I assume that's more than a browser or a PC problem because it's happening to people I'm familiar with as well. That's on their end, I don't know. <sighs> but you know, I I hate to say this because normally you shouldn't have to, but please don't break it further than it already has problems. That'd be nice too. You do have a habit of trying to make things better, and then you're like, "Why the fuck did you do?" That? I don't even. I don't even think it's trying to make things better. It's just. It's, try, <laughs> it's clearly trying to do something else. There's some other motive that has nothing to do with quality and increasing it. Yeah. It was fine. The dialogue was clunky at points. I didn't really get invested in any of the characters except for Nori and the Stranger plotline. Seemed the most interesting. Soundtrack is great though. Rings of power. Apparently. Oh, your opinions are terrible. I, I mean, yeah, I don't think it was fine. I think it was awful. Yeah, I think was it awful. was... The yeah. Nori and the Stranger plotline was fucking nonsense. Um, and the music was extremely unfor. Uh, well, the soundtrack is probably the one thing I'd be like, it, yeah, I guess fine. Yeah, sure. But, uh, I don't know. You just, it's rare that you come across a soundtrack these days where it's tolerable. Like, oh, damn. When it's of like that kind of uh, caliber, especially with that kind of artist attached, you know? Yeah. Ugh, here come those game ruining E words. But what your reference? Well guys, it's knifer. You can't you can't say the sharp R. The knife ear. Mm. Can you believe they said knife ear with a hard R? I know. Uh, you mean the two times that an elf and a human join, they were defeated by Morgoth and your boss was the fruit of their union, Elrond? Elrond's having some rough time, okay. Will there be EFAP minis for this show? No. Nope. But, uh, nope. Like, I think we mentioned this on something recently, but I think Rings of Power got more coverage than almost anything. Yeah, it and it wasn't that clear bad. that it would be the case, really, either. Took some time to break it uh, down. Yeah. Uh, ladders are getting weird grapes. Also, high rags and mootle. Hello! Ladders are just weird. Ooh, my new opinion just dropped. <laughs> well, hey, you know, you 
Watch Rings of Power for yourself if you really want to know, but I would never recommend it. Amazon, a couple of things. Number one, the universe is Middle Earth, not Lord of the Rings. Two, River Folk were the second age precursors to all three Hobbit lines. The Smeagol. Three, also related to Harfoots. Uh, how was Hasbro WOTC not sued you yet for using Gully Dwarves and Raistlin, Railston, and Boopoo Dynamic? I have no idea what that is. No clue what those words even are. But, um... Yeah, I mean, you can send your letter to Amazon, they might listen to you. Yeah, let them know. I'm sure they, they're going to be very receptive to criticism of uh, Ring of Power. Not at all going to be. better be for their sake. It's their money. Well, it's not that's, mine. That is the thing, right? It's like, if if they heard all the criticism, they'd be like, ah, oh, fuck off. And you're like, I'm trying to help you make money. <laughs> I don't understand. Hey, everyone, just seen the first episode. Gotta say, Amazon did better than what I expected. The marketing really lowered expectations. Still, this episode is boring and all over the place. It's a meh. Okay, maybe this is why people are a little bit more positive. Maybe only one episode is out at this point. Or two. Right. I, I will say the first point, two, I think, were, like, the, the best. Uh, I think so. The least happened. <laughs> yeah. The least was fucked up. Uh, according to this lore, if Galadriel was so adamant about defeating Sauron, why wasn't she at the last battle of the Alliance? Or was she? Um, is the implication that she got passionate about it because her brother died? I can't remember. Uh, Mahaba. Mahaba rags? Mahaba? I don't know what that means. But I agree. The Rings of Power, an unbridled snore. Oh, I wouldn't want to make that video. I think you got Lil Platoon is kind of making uh, extensive breakdowns of them, though. So. It's rife for making videos on them. Oh, yeah. Hollywood in a nutshell. Mr. Hanky and the Christmas Poo, Season 1, Episode 9. Trey and Matt. Boss, now that you guys have a fan base and network with YouTubers, you should make a short film, animated or live action. I'm a little bit confused as to the first half and second half of all that, but... Yeah, I don't know exactly what they mean. As for making some kind of animated short film someday, that would be neat. Yeah! Not against that as an idea. Could be fun. Need more animated stuff in the world. Um, looking forward to the bi-yearly Willems coverage. But Patrick Willems in a long time. I what he's up to. Yeah, who knows? Regarding Rings of Power, your thoughts on accusations of review bombing? Can't it just be thousands of people coming to the same reasonable opinion? Um, I can believe well, that would be admitting was... that'd be admitting defeat. So I, I can never... believe it was review bombed, but I simultaneously believe it can be love bombed. So it's kind of like I don't know what to do with this information, you know. Yours is one of my few ten out of tens. And hmm. I haven't seen it in a while, but... Uh, been here since before EFAP had a name. Love you all. Oh, wow. That's a long time ago. Isn't... Uh, EFAP movies Backstroke of the West? At some point, yes. That's still a potential. All of the flowery dialogue is starting to make you think that you are now being picarded. Yeah. Picard. I remember when season one of that came out, everyone was like so hype about the idea. You know, like a show focused around Picard, and it's like his reputation now is absolutely in the toilet. Uh, what would EFAB look like if it was made in 2007? I don't know, I think it'd be pretty similar, wouldn't it? It wouldn't have Discord, so I wonder how we would have done that actually. I think it would be images on screen instead. Like they wouldn't. Have the green circles come up, but we would probably try and do it that way. Yeah, what would change otherwise? Because we could still talk to each other. There are ways to talk to each other. TeamSpeak um, probably would have been what we were using. Or at least I would have been wanting to push for TeamSpeak. Um, I think. Anyway, 2007 is actually quite a long time ago, so... What else was there? Um, X-Fire? Something you could talk to people? Well, either way, uh, what was... Was streaming even a thing in 2007? I don't know. Mm, it must have. Really. I mean, we. I, think I don't know. Might have just been emerging around that time. In that case, we would have been making videos, and it would have been with images, and yeah, that's probably would have been if if EFAP was forced to exist in two thousand seven. 
Been watching the streams for a long time now. You guys actually helped me get back into watching films, so it's about time to give something back. Oh. Well, that's good to know, because films are awesome when they're good. I like films. <laughs> I like them too. Um, if you cover Rings of Power again, could you bring Disparu on? Yeah, see, this is early on. We did indeed bring him on. It's our, it's our Disparu and Lil Platoon are our Rings of Power guys. They help us suffer through. And Disparu's like the only like one I know right now who's decided to go through Velma, I think. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, he is. He is. That's right. Seriously, it's a health risk. Uh, please stop saying humans. Tolkien used the word men from the Anglo-Saxon man, meaning people. Humans comes into English in Latin 1066 invasion. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's more a matter of so you know what we're talking about, really. Uh... Well, if you could adapt anything you love, what would it be? Also, you should be a number one script doctor in Hollywood and high rags a rock. Hello. Um, as for a script doctor, I have no idea how that would go, so I, could, I wouldn't hold your breath on how good I would be in that department. It would be interesting to give it a shot, though. And then as for what I'd like to adapt... Hmm. Mm. If... Because uh, the, the problem with this one is, like... Let's just say, for example, that Lord of the Rings hadn't been adapted at all, and I was like, yeah, that should be adapted. It's like me doing that? I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't know if that's suitable at, at all. It's like, so... Almost like I'd want to adapt something that I want adapted, but simultaneously think that I could maybe handle. And I don't know what that is. Um, so if I could just answer the question in terms of what I'd like to see adapted, I'm perpetually looking for something in Lovecraft that I think still hasn't been craft, uh, craft, cracked yet. <laughs> uh, crafted? Lovecraft that hasn't been crafted yet? Yeah, I want to see an, an adaptation in a particular way, and I'm not even 100% sure of what it is. So, um... I wouldn't mind like spitballing ideas for a long time on that, and then maybe if there's a perfect director and budget that can buy it. Yeah, I would. I would really like to see something like that too. A good cosmic horror kind of a story that's either one of his works or uh, very closely inspired by something he did. Uh, hello, future me. Recently made a video called "Plot Armor is Good." Can you destroy him? Hey, first. Plot armor is good. <laughs> we just check out people's opinions, okay? But as for plot armor being good, we're not really likely to agree with that. So I can give it a look. See, maybe in the future. If it's yeah, I don't even know what. Like, I like to think I could have my minds changed on all sorts of things, but like, damn. Well, it could be like a semantic thing. Uh, yeah, okay. it might be. It might be. We'll find out, perhaps. Uh, it'd be a neat idea to have Hello Future Me on sometime. See? Future holds. Uh, even if this show didn't have the labels relating to Lord of the Rings, it's still a poorly written and cheap looking show. House of the Dragon puts this to shame. Hi, Rags. Hello. There are, yes, it does put Rings of Power to shame. Yeah, there are, there, are, there are shots and there are certain points that you'd definitely call out the cheapness of it, but um, there's still some stuff that's like, yep, they had lots of money. In, in Rings of Power, I mean. House of Dragon definitely looked yeah, better, though. Yeah, obviously. This show is like 60 million per episode. We're at 120 million now. Top Gun Maverick had about 150 million budget for perspective. Well. <laughs> if we... <laughs> well at least Rings of Power is terrible. Yeah. Uh, James Cameron Films ranked. Uh. Well, Aliens and uh, T2 are at the top uh, for everybody, I'd imagine. They're at the top. I was just thinking about which one I'd put above the other, though. I think this was asked on a bar recently, and everybody almost begrudgingly said it's T2, but it's really close. It's... Uh, that can change so easily, though. That's such a close fight, Aliens and T2. That's a real tough one. I would put... I don't even know where I put Abyss, actually, because I was about to say, is that above or below Titanic? I'm not sure. I don't know either. Hmm. Uh, Avatar 2 and 1 are at the bottom. Yes. Uh, 2 and 1 are at the, you know, in that order. I think I put True um, Lies above Abyss and um, Titanic, though. I, I really liked it. Would Realize. you put it above the Terminator, though? No. Yeah. Terminator is fucking great. That is a really great movie. Something about that as well being that it's so limited in terms of its yeah. resources. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, that vaguely creates a list. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The point is, Avatar 1 and 2 are at the bottom. Yeah, fuck them. I would put Avatar 2 below 1 as well, by the way. Oh, of I course. would as well. Um, at this point, is there a reasonable chance that an adaptation slash reboot will ever be as good as what it's based on? Arcane's excluded. Uh, well... The Last of Us show is okay. I mean, I'm, I've already yeah. said, I'm on record as saying I think the game's better still already. If you just count the two episodes that are out, I'd still think the game is better. Um, in terms of, like, there's tweaks that have been made that I think overall uh, make... Like, like I would prefer what they did in the game than the show. But I think in a broad sense, if they maintained the quality of the first two episodes for the whole season, I would say that's about on level with the game. Um, Close to it. But the thing is, I need to see the whole season first, so... We'll let you know. As for Arcane, um, yeah, I mean, that'll be another thing we're going to be keeping a close eye on. Uh, be curious how much they adapt. Play DDLC, Dumbos. Maybe. Uh, the theatrical release of the Fellowship of the Ring is closer to the Carter presidency than it is. <laughs> is closer to the Carter presidency than it is to today. Good God! Nice, That's thanks. True. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Well, and we still remember it and cherish it. Yep. Uh, Arnold should have been Gandalf. Fly, you fools! It, yeah, be fly, you fools. Fly, you fools. Get to the eagles. <laughs> <coughs> no MCU quips in 2022 show. I'm confused. Hi, Metal. Uh, no quips in a 2022 show. Is that what they're saying? Because of shock? Which show are you talking about? Please help. I hated the show. I never knew I was this racist. I already have hobbies, so I don't have time for racism activities. Should I just like it? Listen, okay. Don't like it. You have to come to terms with being a racist. Pretty straightforward. You have hate in your unless you like the show. Bringy equals Frodo. Smaller equals Sam. Metal equals Mary. Rags is Pippin. Hmm. Really? Okay. Uh, opinion on the boys season three. Bad. Well, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even so. start watching it. Season two made me not care at all about the boys. I Yep. There's like I have a, no interest whatsoever. a bit of a reset at the beginning, and then they start building up a story again. There's some stuff that's enticing and interesting, and then they squander it. Um, Black Noir, what happens to him is fucking terrible. And then uh, Maeve survives something she absolutely shouldn't, and uh, they waste Soldier Boy as well. So, I don't know, yeah. Um, I'm someone who's very much not a fan of the boys at this point, and it seems like... Uh, my opinion of, of like season three wasn't exactly not shared. It's like a lot of people didn't like uh, how the season ended. Okay. Thoughts on Twitter circles? Cool or meh? Twitter circles? I don't even know. What, that is. Don't even know what is that? I don't yeah. Know what that is. Don't know. Um, do you guys think Avatar 2 will outgross Maverick? Yes. Well, it did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three four three. Makes... Gross, uh, Infinity Ward. Uh, Infinity Ward. <laughs> Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. Uh, three four three makes respawn look competent. Uh, well, I'm not as familiar with what respawn is up to lately. Um, but I mean, I've always had the imp I mean, three respawn have made good games. So. Well, we got that then. Yeah. <laughs> well, then again, I think Halo Five is has a good multiplayer component. It's just um. Yeah, and Halo Infinite had multiplayer was fun for a time. It's just yeah, but I mean, three four three is well. I guess there have been a lot of developments in the time since that super chat would have come through, and now yeah. I understand the lacking content for Infinite multiplayer, but honestly, I still love the campaign. Not Halo three level, but definitely the most fun gameplay wise. I think Frank. For Infinite, he said. Yeah. I didn't complete it, so. Couldn't have been that That's fun then. <laughs> um, it was fun, but like uh, I don't know. It just um, having having recently replayed the Bungie campaigns, it's like there's a lot of variety, and um, 
in the mission structure and the locales that I felt wasn't as present in um Infinite's campaign. You go to a lot of different places, uh, and like that novelty alone like goes a long way. And Infinite just does not have that novelty. It's one biome the whole time. Whereas, like, if you look at, you know, when Halo Combat evolved, right, the first mission is on the Pillar of Autumn, and then you head down to Halo, and it's your sort of quintessential, like, just this is what Halo feels like, you know, with the boreal forest and everything, which is basically the only thing that Infinite had. And then you have, like, Truth and Reconciliation, which is kind of like a desert-like area until you get onto a Covenant ship. Um, and to be fair, you do go and banish, like, ships and outposts and stuff, but then Silent Cartographer, like, beach area, um, and then the, the assault on the control center is, like, uh, snow mountain, like, mountainous terrain, and then you go to the jungles, like, it's, it's just, there's a ton of variety in, like, Halo CE that isn't present, and the same applies for, like, Halo 2 and 3, there's a shit ton of variety in the locations that you oh, get yeah. to visit. A lot of places. Yeah. Same goes for Reach, and uh, Halo Infinite just does not have that variety, which I- and, and I think at this point it's just safe to say that I don't care about the story anymore, I don't care. Um, like, my investment is, is over in terms of uh, the ongoing story of Halo, and it looks like at this point that may well just- the, the story itself may be over. Um, any attempts of doing, like, ongoing campaign stuff might be- pff, who knows. Uh, oh, and they followed up with saying, and I really like the characters, the music, and the weapons. I like the music, and I do like the weapons, including the new ones. Um, characters, again, I didn't play enough, can't say. The thing of the day is getting tired. Oh no, even the wings quote of the day? I think they're still pretty funny. What about everyone else? Uh, <laughs> the wings quotes of the day are fun. I would go as far as saying, almost in an unexpected way, that's the only one that I definitely am not tired of. I find them hilarious. And you'd think, it's like, how can that still be going? It's like, oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's just... There's a lot of funny stuff, what can I say? Uh, Bat Fringy, you would love studying cosmology and astrophysics. I studied it for 30 years, it never gets boring. Yeah, I love that shit. It's cool. And I have no doubt it never gets boring. There's new stuff that's being discovered all the time. Uh, guys, have any one of you read the Hyperion Canto series? I haven't heard of no. it. No. I don't even know what that is. Um, favorite Assassin's Creed? And which, if any, you'd like to see redone with a modern engine slash gameplay? And what setting not done you'd like to see? Uh, my favorite is probably two. Uh, and I guess to maybe address those subsequent questions, would I want to remade? It's like, eh, not really. Maybe like just for the graphics, but like I don't, I don't really need it to change that much. Maybe just make the combat a bit harder. Um, and as for the area that hasn't been explored, it's it's the it's the common one, but feudal Japan, which we're getting now eventually. But like that's the one that I want to see. Um, I've only probably played Assassin's Creed One. I liked it. I don't really have anything else for the other questions. I don't feel very strongly about them. I really enjoyed 2 when it came out. I really uh, just had a great time playing that game and exploring that world. I've played, you know, a number since, and I probably will go back and finish Unity. But it's really tough to... I don't know, like Valhalla didn't interest me at all. Because there's, there's like two that I just didn't at all care about. Um, there was... God, there was the, the Viking one is Valhalla, and Odyssey was like was a, a one Greek one. That, Odyssey, I yeah. And I really liked Odyssey up until a point. Um, I was really enjoying exploring Greece until I got to the point where it's like, oh, we're starting to like, there's a lot of copy pasting going on here. And like, by the time I hit the credits, I was like, yeah, I, I think I'm done. Um, like I was done, even though I had plenty more that was left to do. It's like, I feel like I've exhausted everything that I wanted out of this. So I did enjoy that up until a point, but um, yeah. I'm okay with a return to the old format at this point. It's been a long time. Um, America Suarez versus She-Hulk, who wins? America, she can just portal her to hell. Imagine so. 
Remember, yeah, but She-Hulk just Mustafa. break the fourth wall and then have, like, Kevin just yeet her into a black hole or something. No, you said you can't do that again, remember? Totally fine. Yeah, but she it. will. She can and will. Uh, when I was a kid, Lux Ray was my favorite Mon. Okay. Amazon's money laundering ring of power. I mean, it, I believe they wasted money on it rather than laundering money with it. <laughs> That woman is something I think it was like, just a mistake. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rags or Mauler, can you kick down the door of Metal's Forge and make him watch Zulu? That film is fucking fantastic. I've seen Zulu. It's really good. Well, I'm gonna make him watch it, apparently. We can do that. Yeah, let's do it. Watch Pig. Because I've, I've seen Pig. Cage I have movie. not. I haven't seen it. Unconventional movie. Zoo of the day, Vienna Zoo, oldest zoo in existence. Really? Vienna Zoo? I wouldn't have guessed that, but I suppose it makes sense. Why, because Vienna is the first place? Yeah. The first place, yeah. Humans came out of Vienna. That's Very true, cool. that's true. Have you seen Pretty the game neat. Metal Helsinger Thoughts? I have, and I've played it. It's a really cool idea. It's a first-person shooter that is based around if you shoot with the beat, you'll have more powerful shots, um, and the songs will change, and uh, they'll add layers of like instrument or just, I guess, additional lyrics and stuff, and uh, singing or choir, depending on how well you're doing and what kind of combo you have. Um, I thought... It was a really cool thing. I thought they missed out on a couple of things, though. Like the the story is you're um like a demon that's sent to the bottom of hell, and you have to go up level by level until you reach like Satan or whatever and kill him. But they don't um there's not much character I didn't find to each of the, the say for example there's seven levels I can't remember how many there actually are um they're all given like a name and I think they have something of a theme, but like there's because I was talking with another friend who really likes metal about this. Not Mel, the guy Mel. Um, didn't feel like there was as much diversity as there should be for the song choices. A lot of them were very similar and, uh, for lack of a better word, safe. They were more uh, accepted forms and when it would have been really cool to have. And this is the thing, I'm not a fan of like certain genres of metal, but it would be really cool to have a focus on more obscure genres in each world and like a boss to represent that and enemies to represent that and a different beat maybe even a complicated beat as the game goes on there's a um, basically it's to be fair to the game i don't think it's like super high budget i think it's indie as well but uh lots of potential and full recommendation to any metal fan i just um i was just thinking about the the game being pushed to like full potential how cool it could be because you know you have like viking metal or black metal, or symphonic metal, which is one I like. Like, you, you can already see how much you could, like, pirate metal, how you could inspire, like, an awesome FPS boss out of these things. Um, yeah, I, yeah, even just based on those descriptions, it's like, yeah, I can say that, for sure. So, um, hey, I don't know what they'll do in the future, but uh, it was a really cool idea for a game, and when I was playing it, I was like, I don't know why this has never been made before. Like, Guitar Hero, but for FPS or something. Right. I think there's a game called Crypt of the Necro Dancer that's, that's a similar yep. concept. Yeah. That's not... It's uh, like, yeah, rhythm rhythm games, but sort of with a combat system. Thanks for all your work, EFAP and EFAP viewers. Also, Metal, your bilingualness is very impressive. Not many can do that. Your German is getting better every week. How do you do that? <laughs> I've always, yeah, he's been learning his German and... With you. It fucks with his English. So, why why even bother? Nobody speaks German anymore. Have you guys seen Kung Fury? If not, it would be perfect for EFAP movies, a parody of 80s, actions, 80s action movie where Hacker Man is from. Also, high rags. Hi. Um, yeah, I've seen Kung Fury. Uh, we could do I've it. I've seen it. It's movies fun. Sometime. Movie Bob Chu is a slow, easygoing Pokemon who occasionally bumps its head on the top of the fridge. Occasionally, it also knocks over its tower of cans. <laughs> oh, do you remember that? Movie Bob Chu. He knocked over his huge collection of cans. Hey, they were just for the week. That. <laughs> and then people were like, what the <laughs> fuck? Why do you have an enormous collection of soda cans? 
The way he tried to rationalize it like it's a normal thing. Yeah. That's the thing. He That happened with the McDonald's thing, uh, where he just acts like it's normal to be this disgusting fast food eating slob. <laughs> it's a fairly small amount for the average person. Why did he say that? Why did you say that? <laughs> Oh, man. It's funny, too, because I think a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, because, like, fast food is designed to sort of just go down and blah, blah. And it's like, I don't know, man. A fucking a burger and a set of fries, I'm already getting kind of, you know, it can fill up. Absolutely. Especially with this. I can't uh, like imagine eating that kind of food. That's disgust. That's actually disgusting. <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of disgusting and horrible events, that's it. We're done, so. I was going to say Rings of Power. Well, that too. Um, so, thank you all for listening. Uh, funnily enough, we're getting getting real close now to being actually caught up. It's kind of unreal. That's exciting. Oh, wow. That oh. happened once before, that it time. Did. Yeah, that did happen once before. Remember last time we caught up, it was right before the anniversary, and then... Yay! <laughs> it was like, well, floodgates. Just in time for a reset. Uh, so, thank you all for listening. Thank you for the kind messages, the generous donations, and for... Um, hanging out with us. Appreciate it. We will see you yeah, everybody. in the next thing, whatever it may be. Toodles! Yeah, goodbye everybody. Bye -bye. We'll see you later.